So I mentioned in my last video that I'm purchasing a new 2023 Subaru Outback. And in this video, I'm gonna go over what I'm doing to prep my Honda to get it ready to be resold. This video will be helpful for you if you are looking to get a new car and you're trying to get the most for trade-in value or you're looking to sell your car outright and you want some tips on how to get the most for it. If you guys are new to my channel, my name is Alex. I like to share weekly videos all about Subarus, helping you learn about how your car is operated, how to buy one, and also how to sell your car. So if you guys are interested in that, then please be sure to click the subscribe button down below, comment below with any questions you have, and if you learn something new and get value out of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you click the like button. You know it's my off day when I got my Crocs on. <laughs> The first and probably most obvious thing that you're going to want to start with when trying to get the most for your car is make sure that all of your maintenance is up to date. Now, there are a few caveats to that. Obviously, if you have a bad engine or bad transmission or something major is going on with the car and it's not a high value car to begin with, then in that case, it's probably not worth fooling with. But I'm gonna go over some things that I'm actually getting done and have already done on my car in this video. One of the first things that I have customers ask about and look at on a used car is the condition of the tires. You wanna make sure that your tires are in good shape. The Yokohama Avid GTs on this car are actually what we put on the Outback as a standard. They're a really good all season tire and they're relatively low cost. I believe for most vehicles, depending on your tire specs or wheel specs, you can get them for about $800 to $1,000 mounted. It's also a good idea to make sure your brakes and rotors are in good shape when you're reselling your car. Now, I just did a full four-wheel brake and rotor replacement. You don't have to go quite to that extent, but I do want to make sure the car is in good shape for its new owner, and I want to make sure that I'm able to get a high value for my car, and doing some of this regular maintenance will help me achieve that. One thing I haven't done yet that I plan to do here very soon is order one of the caps for the front bumper. This is where the tow hook goes. And although that's not a big deal for most people, it does give a lower perceived value when somebody looks at the front of the car and sees that something is missing. And this should be a relatively low cost. I believe I can get a painted one for about 10 or $15. So for that low amount of cost, it's something that if you have something missing on your car, cosmetic or a plastic piece, if you can get it replaced, go ahead and do it because it's going to make your car look better and give it a higher perceived value. If your car has a check engine light on the dash like mine does here, you might wanna get that addressed before taking it to get offers because it is going to bring less money with those lights on the dash. If you have a check engine light on and you're not sure what the issue is, of course you can take it to a mechanic or a lower cost alternative is go to your local AutoZone or auto parts store, ask them for a check engine light tester. They'll plug it up to your OBD2 port down below here. It will pull a code and you can just Google that code. It'll tell you what is going on with your car. A quick note on this though, if you have a high mileage car, a lot of times your check engine light will come on because of a bad O2 sensor that's reading the oxygen from the exhaust, or you have a TPMS sensor on. That's actually what mine is reading here. It has both the emission system for the O2 sensor and the tire pressure monitoring systems, both of which are very typical to go bad on higher mileage cars. And oftentimes it does not affect the drivability and it's not worth getting those things fixed. In my case, my check engine light has actually been on since I've owned the car for about three years. And it doesn't allow me to go into eco mode, but it's not that big of a deal to me because I still get really good gas mileage, as you can see. It's also pretty common that if you do get an O2 sensor replaced that they go bad shortly thereafter. So it's not really worth it, in my opinion, to spend the money on a high mileage car like this to fix the O2 sensor. And for my tire pressure sensor, I always check my tires to see that they're okay. Now, it's not something you have to check daily, but just a visual inspection. And then if one looks low, check it with a gauge just to make sure that they're not going flat. But I did just get new tires recently and they are in good shape. So I'm not too worried about the tire pressure sensor either. If you're not going to get the check engine light fixed for private party individuals who are buying your car, at least offer them peace of mind by allowing them to take the car to their local mechanic to have it inspected before they proceed with the purchase. Now a dealership is not going to get a car inspected before 
they give you an offer, they're just going to give you an offer and they're going to reduce it based on those lights being on on the dash. The next tip I have for you guys should go without saying, but make sure you do a good wash on your car before you go show it to a prospective buyer or take it to the dealer to get an offer on it. The reason why is because presentation is key. It's all about perception. And if your car is all dirty, then it's gonna have a lower perceived value. So make sure you take it get it washed or do a hand wash. You don't necessarily have to have a pressure washer either. You can just use a garden hose and I've actually used Dawn dish soap in the past just to wash my car off and get it looking clean again. And just an added touch, add some tire shine to the sidewalls of the tires to make them look nice, replenished and refreshed. That'll really add an additional touch to your car just to make it look that much nicer when you go to show it. Don't forget the inside either. Make sure you vacuum this out real good. If you have cloth interior like mine with stains, then you can get a detailer to rent from the hardware store like Home Depot for like 20 something dollars for the entire day. It'll push out water and soap and suck all these stains out. You do have to let that dry, but it will make your seats look 10 times better. I'll show you guys a before and after of these seats just to give you an example. Also, just a quick side note, I know this seat looks terrible and I don't usually let my seats get dirty like this, but I did spill coffee. And just as an example, I wanna show you guys how well this cleans up with that detailer from Home Depot. Here are what the seats look like before and here are what the seats look like now that I've cleaned them with the detailer. The next tip I have is to take your VIN number and your exact mileage and plug this in online on car selling websites like Vroom, Carvana and CarMax. This will give you a baseline on the least amount that you could probably get for your car. And then also check out your local dealerships, get an offer from them, especially if you are planning to trade your vehicle in on a car that you're purchasing from them because you might be eligible for a tax credit. And I'll share more on that in just a moment. So my offers that I got online were anywhere from $0 all the way up to $800. And I feel quite confident that I could sell it privately for a lot more than that. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna show you how much I think I could probably sell it for here in just a moment as well. To find out what your car would potentially sell for if a dealership sold it, or if you sell it outright to an individual, go online, just Google the year, make and model of your car, and a ton of different car websites are gonna pop up showing you listings for a car identical to yours. So whenever I type in 2011 Honda CRZ, I see them listed anywhere from about $5,000 on up to 15 and $16,000. So the highest mileage one I found was well over 200,000 miles and it was in the $5,000 range. And there were quite a few that were listed in the same mileage and condition as mine for around six to $7,000. So that's what I'm estimating I could probably get if I sell it outright on my own. Now, of course, selling your car outright on your own is very time consuming, but that is the way to net the most for your vehicle because a dealership or these online retailers like Vroom and Carvana, they have to buy it low enough to be able to turn around and sell it for a profit. So it comes down to how much time you have and how much effort you wanna put into it. I've personally never sold my car to Carvana, CarMax or Vroom, but I do hear that they are very easy and convenient. Also selling to a dealership is very convenient too because they handle all of the title work for you when you sell that car. You don't have to think about it anymore. They take care of it. If you're not just selling your car, but you're also considering purchasing a car, it would benefit you to check with the dealer that you're buying your car with to see what offer they would give you on a trade value. The reason why is because a lot of times most states will give you a tax credit when you're trading your car in at the same time that you're purchasing another vehicle. So it has to be all in the same transaction. To break this down and show you how it works, let's use Kentucky as an example. So if somebody's coming to buy a new Subaru from me, say the Subaru is valued at $30,000 that they're buying. Well, typically you pay 6% sales tax for Kentucky sales tax rate. So that's $1,800 that you would have to pay in sales tax on that $30,000 vehicle. But say you have a trade that is valued at $20,000, well then you only pay taxes on the difference. So you only pay taxes on $10,000 instead of 30. 6% of $10,000 is only 600. And in that example is saving yourself $1,200 on sales tax. 
and to get the net amount for your trade, you just take that savings, that $1,200 plus your trade value, $20,000 to net you $21,200. That is how much you're getting for your trade. So if you were to sell it to Carvana or CarMax or Vroom, you want to make sure that you're getting more than $21,200 for it to be worth your while. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, please be sure to click the like button. That really helps me out and I would greatly appreciate it. Leave comments below with any questions you have. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next one.